right. Look at this. This is Texas red chili. A little bit of onion and some cheese on top there. I tell you what, this is a dish that once you've tried it, you're just going to go nuts. And I tell you what, this is the best thing in the world on a cold winter day. A little bit of Texas red chili. Mm. Hello. Welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, we're going to be making a batch of Texas chili. Now, I thought it was about time that I put on one show that's all about chili. I'm not going to show a whole lot of different ways of making it. I'm going to show you one way of making it. I've been doing this for years, decades in fact. And I'll tell you what, I've come up with a chili recipe that is really off the hook good. And sure enough, there's lots of chilies in it. it I believe this is a dish that deserves its namesake. So, come a little closer. And let's go over what we're going to use to make chili. Alright, now we are going to be, of course, making chili. So on our ingredients, let's start with the heart of our chili, and that's going to be our beef. I have two separate cuts of beef here. This one's a top sirloin, and this one is a New York strip. We're all familiar with that cut, and it's a wonderful flavor. So I'll tell you what, we're going to take this wonderful strip steak and this sirloin, and I'm going to grind them together. If you don't have a grinder, I'll tell you what, talk to your uh, butcher, and I'll bet you money they'll gladly grind it for you. Now on our other ingredients. What would chili be without chilies? Okay, so we have some poblanos here and we have some jalapenos. Three poblanos, five jalapenos, two medium sized onions. This is some tomato paste. And uh, you know, a lot of times you, you, know, you hear me say things like, oh, well don't bother using tomato paste with chili powder in it because if we're looking for a chili powder flavor, then we just make a chili sauce from dried chilies. But in this case, we actually want the tomato flavor in this. This is part of the tradition of making good chili. So we're going to use this, and we're going to use the dried grind on uh, chilies, and that way we can get a flavor in there, but we don't want to rob it completely of its tomato flavor. So it's going to be strong on these chilies, but not overwhelming to what the dish is. Also, another important ingredient, this back here is some bourbon, okay? Don't worry about what brand of bourbon you get, just get a good quality one. Anything that uh, is good for drinking is good for making uh, a good dish from. Also, we're going to be using some water, so that's going to be about a cup and a half here, two cups here, and something in a glass for you to enjoy as you do this, okay? Now, let's move right on to our next step, and we're going to be dealing with our, our chilies over here. We want to scorch these. It is now time, let's go ahead and get these chilies onto some fire. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to place chilies directly on top of a gas burner. And if you don't have an indoor gas burner, you can of course use an outdoor grill. That works really well. Uh, also put these under a broiler, that can work. Any direct high heat source, even if you just have a torch, that will work well also. Now I'm turning that burner on. Now we're going to cook all of our chilies on top of this and the idea here is not really to cook the chili but to char the skin and in that charring process I'm going to get a smoky like flavor built into my chilies and it's a wonderful flavor and it's a good start for a flavor boost for a good tasting chili. It's time for us to go ahead and wash off these chilies and this is just simple enough. I'm going to give it a good wash under running water and knock that skin right off. Now, as you do this, on the larger chilies, and this won't work on the smaller ones, but on these larger ones, let me show you a little trick. Let me get the rest of the skin off. Now, I'm going to push my fingers to the edge of this, just like so and pull down. That gives me a little slit. I'm going to take it at the top and peel it free from the crown. Right there. That's all I have to do. Pull that crown out, the seed pod, wash out any excess seeds, and I'm finished. There we go. That's ready to be sliced up, beautiful skinned out, ready to go, poblano. Just do all of them the same exact way. Okay, this is one of the occasions when I am going to give strong recommendation towards the use 
of gloves. And there's a good reason for this. This had nothing to do with cleaning up. This has to do with an item called capsaicin. Now, whenever you're dealing with any kind of a hot chili, a hot pepper, like, uh, let's say, jalapeno or anything hotter than that, like serranos, then you're going to have to deal with an ingredient that's inside of this that's referred to as capsaicin. And it is an oil that is, exists inside of this. It's extremely hot. That's what makes the chili hot. So what I want to do is very gently and carefully open these up. And I'm going to seed them. Give that a little rinse. And the idea there is you just want to get those seeds out of it and as much of the veins and this core, because this is all capsaicin containing. It's very, very hot. So I recommend remo removing that to give yourself just a little bit cooler experience and you still get the excellent chili flavor involved also. Now I'm using a lot of jalapenos this time, meaning I really wanted a very warm chili. So, that's what I'm going to go for. If you don't like your chili really hot, then you might want to omit some of the jalapeno that I'm using. Uh, if you want it extremely hot, then add some serranos. Or, if you're just bold enough, if you think you've got it in you, then go out and get some of those uh, habaneros and put two or three of those down in your pot of chili. Don't be mad at me if you do that, though, because I personally believe you're going to burn your mouth and you're not going to be able to eat the pot of chili. So, you've been forewarned. Now it's just time for us to get on with doing a little bit of fine cutting on this. And what we're looking for are just some little tiny dice. So I'm going to be cutting these into really narrow strips, okay? Just like narrow french fries, okay? About the same width. So there we have just some nice small dice. And I'm going to do all of this chili this way all of the uh, jalapenos and all of the uh, um, poblanos up here. And the thing of it is, is if you are worried about the heat of these uh, jalapenos, then for all, by all means, please leave them out. Uh, but if you want, replace them with one extra poblano. And those poblanos are pretty mild. They don't have to worry about, they don't have too much heat in them. Uh, also, if you're worried about heat, then the cayenne that we're going to be putting in later you might want to consider omitting it too because cayenne is fiery hot. And uh, so I'm making a chili here that's, that's got quite a bit of zest to it. But it's not an unbearable chili. It's just good and spicy. Now, if you'll notice, sometimes you'll see me move my hand lengthwise down the blade. My finger is well above this edge. I'm never running it along that edge. If I did, my hand would be a bloody mess right now because this edge is beyond razor sharp. And when I'm running my hand this way, my fingers are curved up and I'm pushing stuff off just like so. All right? So my fingers never get down near that edge. They're always up and away from the edge. I'm pushing it off the back of the knife. And anything that's near the edge, it can just stay down there as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you have to push something off the edge, always push it <clears throat> away from that edge, like so. That's another safe way of doing it. Now, let's move right on to that onion. Something that I want to mention about doing onions. You have the root end and you have the stalk end. Cut the stalk end off, but leave that root end intact. Cut a thin cut to the outer ring. Let me get that started. There we go. And we just want to remove that outer layer, the outer fleshy layer. Because in spots, like right there, it's going to be thin. And that thin spot will not cook up well, all right? Now, the reason I do not cut into the root end of this, and this is important, leave that root end in intact, 
and it won't weep nearly as quickly. You're not going to lose as much of the onion juice. And as long as that doesn't happen, you're not going to be as prone to start tearing up real now, quick. Neat ways to cut onions. Let me give you some ideas here. Slice down on that one side of that root. Slice down on the other side. You have two sides here easy to work and the thing still isn't weeping yet, okay? Now, what do I do if I want to make some dice? I can just cut through it crosswise like so. Isn't that neat? And my dice are coming out like this. There you go. Good safe way of dicing out an onion. And you might have some long pieces still left in that. Just do a little bit of cross cut on that. And those will be those end pieces where it gets near the rounded end there. Now, next method. That was real easy. And this one is a little more complete. This is going to do a really much finer job. We're going to take that cross cut like I did the first time. Now, I'm going to make lengthwise cuts, just like so. And this is the best way I know of of getting a good dice. Because it's perfect every time. Bam, right there. Perfect, even dice. Okay, so quick method just for chopping up. Good method for fine dicing. Now, what do we do with the center of that onion that's left over? Well, you saw what we just did to that last piece. All I have to do is duplicate that. All right, it is time for me to go ahead and grind up my beef. Now, if you do not have a meat grinder, as I mentioned before, you can simply ask your butcher to take one of each of these items, a pound and a half of the sirloin, top sirloin, and one pound worth of the uh, New York strip, <coughs> and to simply grind them together, fat and all. All right, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for some of the can't fat content from this baby and the flavor of it mixed in with the beefy, uh, heavy flavor of the sirloin there. So, I'm simply going to take this and to cut it into strips. Got it. All right. Now I've got my meat ready to go in the pot. Let's move on to our next stage. Now it's time for us to go ahead and get started actually making this wonderful chili. I'm just going to take this wonderful meat that we ground up. Beautiful beef. And now I can rid myself of these and get on with cooking this. Now what I want to do while I'm cooking up my beef, I want to cook up that onion right with it. Place that on high heat. Now, also, I'm going to add to the fat that I have in this. And there's a fat that tastes really good when it's mixed in in chili. A lot of people don't know about it. But believe it or not, olive oil, for some weird reason, seems to work in this case. So I'm putting in about three to four tablespoons of olive oil there. And I'm going to bring this up and let that all start cooking together. And I want to do some browning on the meat and get that onion softened up. And when the onion starts to turn a bit translucent, it's going to be time to put in our chilies. We're up to about six minutes now on uh, high temperature and I'm going to, if you notice, some of these onions are starting to break down some. They're taking on more of a translucent color. Most of the meat is starting to turn gray. We've got some pink spots still in it. And that's a perfect spot to go ahead and put that chili down in there. All those chilies right into it. And these these little guys are at the heart of the flavor of this dish. It's magnificent because not only are we using chilies fresh, but we're also using chili powder, which is dried chilies that are ground. And through this, 
we get a magnificent combination of flavors. I just can't wait for y'all to try it. While that's cooking, I'm going to cover it. We'll build steam inside of that pot, and that's going to help to further break down those vegetables and make them very tender and make for a more stewed effect, which is really what we're looking for. Well, it's only been just a couple of minutes. As I mentioned before, I want to stir it frequently during this process. We're trying to get a good even cook on our meat and veggies. That looks beautiful. Now, something I'm going to do right now, and this is just to bring out some flavor. Let's put in some salt. I'm going to put in just a couple of teaspoons here. We are now up to a total of about 15 minutes of cooking overall. 15, 16, in that range. And I have a, a nicely defined product here. Okay? The onions, if you look at those, they're very clear looking. The peppers have become soft. The meat is cooked through. It's exactly what I've been looking for. Now, I want to put in our base material. And I told you earlier that you want to use about 8 ounces of tomato paste. That was incorrect. I have here 16 ounces of tomato paste. Now, we need something to break that and give it some moisture. And I want to go ahead and start adding in some of that bourbon I mentioned before. I mentioned we're going to use about a cup and a half. And right there is about three quarters of a cup. We'll go ahead and add in some of our water. About a cup of that. Now I want to turn down my temperature just a little bit so I have a medium flame under here. Time for us to pour in some more of that bourbon. So remember, we're trying to hydrate out that tomato paste and we're trying to give it the oaky flavor that bourbon has. So it gives it that woody flavor, kind of like the meat had been smoked. Now, more of the water. Now I'm starting to get more of a chili consistency, just the way it should be. And this is going to have to simmer, but we're going to put in the rest of our seasonings to do that. And again, more of our bourbon. If it seems like I'm going overboard, well remember it's a big pot of chili and that's going to cook off on that alcohol. So a portion of that liquid goes into evaporation into the air. And the rest, which is the flavor portion, remains in the chili. A little bit more salt. Let's start with the chili powder. And I mentioned to you earlier about three tablespoons. Three tablespoons is a quarter of a cup, okay? There's two tablespoons. We'll start with that, work it in a little. And I'm going to get the spoon out of my way. And you'll see why. A good quality whisk will make easy work like this, breaking up spices and uh, getting things worked in. One more tablespoon. Then we mentioned also we'll be having about two tablespoons of paprika over poured that. And that's about what I got there is about two tablespoons. Reduce that heat again so it won't bubble out while I'm working on it. And this is the cayenne. Remember one thing about cayenne. It's fiery hot. So, one tablespoon on my cayenne, which is going to make an already hot chili blasting hot. And then we need something to help this become dry and earthy. About a tablespoon of cumin. Work that in. All right. Now, there's one other thing some people like to use, and you don't have to put it in this. Some folks like garlic. I wouldn't recommend putting garlic powder in there. That's just icky. Yuck. 
using fresh garlic wonderful and I'm gonna put a little bit in there I didn't mention that earlier but guess what I'm putting some garlic in there so let's turn around do some mincing on garlic before we throw it in our pot. Now after we go ahead and peel the paper off the outside of our garlic as I have here then remove the callus end on that where it was attached to the root. Just get that out of your way. Smash each of those cloves and then we're going to do a simple cross cut using a rocking motion like so. And you need a blade that's offset from the handle like this is in order to do this properly. Put your fingers on top, fold the thumb underneath, and simply, very gently, work your way through this. And what I'm doing at first here is just breaking up the bigger pieces. I'm trying to get something small and workable. Mints. The smell coming off of this pot is wonderful. It's a deep bourbon smell. Well, what will happen on chili is that meat will go down to the bottom and it will stick there and if you're not careful you'll end up burning your meat. So you don't want to do that so give it some frequent stirring. There we go. And earlier I did add an extra cup of water to this. So if yours is a bit thick, go ahead thin it down a little more. And if you need to add more as you go, that's fine. Now what I have here is what looks like an absolutely beautiful chili. I think I need to thin it just a little bit more, but I also want to taste it. So, whenever you're going to taste what you're making, pull out just a little, give it a good taste, adjust your seasonings as needed. Mm -hmm. That's very good. It is a little bit flat, so here comes the salt. Okay, a little bit of that. I'm going to add a little more water. This chili has now simmered for approximately one hour, and I'm turning off the flame underneath it. We're going to push it aside and I'm just going to let it set and rest. The flavors in that have married well. I tasted it one last time and the flavor of the chilies has come out, the, the, the flavor of the onion has come out in this. Uh, everything just started to pop and it all was uh, centered around me adding that little extra uh, salty acid in there and then suddenly the flavors just started to pop and that's sometimes what it takes and that's the reason we taste our dishes always so while that's cooking up I like to put a little pasta in my chili so I'm cooking some up over here and and that's just fine because this really needs to rest for about 30 minutes just let it set aside and then uh, dress it the way you'd like I'll be putting on a little bit of uh, extra onion and some shredded cheese I can't wait our chili was going to need a little bit of time to cool and while it's doing that I want to fix some onion for my chili and I'm going to use a red onion only for one reason I like the color it looks really pretty so we're gonna go with that yellow onion will work just as good for this so we'll white Now if you're wondering what those little slices are like, look at this, look at that ultra super thin onion. And that's all I had to do was that one simple motion. There, now you know how to slice down onion real quick, real easy, and to get those slices real super duper well, thin. Well we come right down to everything being ready and prepared. As I mentioned to you before, I was preparing some pasta because sometimes I like to use pasta in my chili. Now you don't have to do this. You can also use beans or you can just omit both of them. I like to do this because the pasta makes a good filler. It adds to it and if you're looking to stretch, especially if you have children and you want to stretch out those ingredients a little more to uh, fill the bellies of many mouths plus give them a lot of energy, this is a great way to do that. 
If not, I would recommend just leaving the pasta out completely. Some people will tell you chili's not chili unless it has beans. And that's fine. You know, there's a lot of different ways of making this. Look at that beautiful Texas red chili. The red color is just strong through it. There. Serious bowl of chili, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, chili deserves a little bit of garnish. And one of the things I like to put on mine is some fresh onion. Okay, so we're just gonna put some of that onion right up in there, like so. I'm going to put some cheese right up on it. I'll tell you what, this is an absolutely heavenly delight. I hope you enjoy yours. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> there we have it. Texas red chili. That's some good looking stuff. Oh boy. You know, this is one of those treats that I just love. Let me get a little of that cheese in it. Mm. Oh man, and the flavors, so beefy and rich, and the chili flavor just explodes. I'll tell you what, give this one a try, you're going to love this chili. Mm. I'll tell you what, uh, thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking Today, and you have a good day. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today the show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.